Gospel of Peter. That is in the New Testament, 2 Peter uh, chapter 1. Amen. 2 Peter chapter 1. A few observations before uh, I preach the word of God today as you're standing right now uh, here. Uh, I do want to say that um, <clears throat> at Reviving Lives Church, we preach Jesus and Jesus alone. We preach through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have eternal life. And all you have to do is accept him as your personal savior in your heart. Believe that he is the Christ, that he died on the cross, was buried, and rose again on the third day. And once you believe in him, we believe that you're saved. Amen. Once you accept him as your Lord and Savior. But then also there is an obligation. There's a responsibility for every believer who is a professed uh, a believer of Christ. And that is to mature in the faith. That is to get rock solid <laughs> connected with a local church where you can grow in the word of God where you can know who Jesus is for yourself, not when the preacher just talk about him, but when others uh, that you may know for yourself so you can share it with others. And so I ask that, uh, again, that you, you pray for me today as we talk about really uh, our spiritual growth in Christ this morning out of Second Peter chapter 1. Amen. All right, y'all got the scripture? Okay, you got it on your phone or on your Bible? All right, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and start at verse three. And it reads, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become a partaker. You may become partakers rather of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he has he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fail. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you and an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we come, we ask now, Lord, that you would take these words and, Lord, that we would uh, understand, oh, Father, what it means to grow in Christ. And, Father, challenge us today, Lord, to move in obedience, that we would do it quickly, that we would not be slow, but, Father, that we would, Lord, act immediately. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Now I ask right now for every hearer that you will bless them, Lord. Oh, Father, for a transformation in their own life, that they may, Lord, know you better. That they, Lord, oh, Father, may confess their sins. And then, Lord, I pray, God, that you would be with them, even, Lord, through the rest of the week as they face challenges at home or at work at school, wherever it may be, I pray, Lord, that you would, Lord, remind them of these in, of these words of your instruction. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 
Let me begin by saying that God has provided all that is needed for a life of godliness. And this call to godliness is a call that we all should take heed to. It is not an option. It's not an it's not optional, rather, to live a godly life. Uh, matter of fact, it's a requirement. And as we just read, it is really a confirmation that you are in Jesus Christ. It is a confirmation or confirm your calling and election. Uh, it, it, it's it's a it's don't don't talk about it, but 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 do something about it type of message. It, it, this is a this is a message where you move from head knowledge to start to it needs to affect your heart and it needs to move in your own body and your actions and how you respond to God. But not only how you respond to God, but also how you respond to people as you live on this world. So I want you to understand that we are called to be fruitful. Every one of us are called to produce fruit. Uh, God has given you seed. That is the word of God, and he intends for you to plant the seed so that it will reap a harvest. And the fruit is what God is desiring in every one of our lives. Fruit, being fruitful. Uh, uh, first Peter, or second Peter rather, is, is a passionate plea for the believers to grow and mature in Christ to be neither idle nor unfruitful. And with this as a foundation to guard against the rising tide of other false prophets out there. And, and can I tell you this, that the reason why we have not moved in the purpose that God he has created us to be is because we are not producing fruit. We're not producing fruit. And, and so this is a, a, a time, a season that God is calling the church and saying to the church, I am watching and I am expecting fruit from you. I'm expecting fruit from uh, the church. I am expecting fruit from each and every believer of Jesus Christ. And what we need to understand that the time is short, isn't it? The time is short because you, you have to understand that 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 the time is short uh, because uh, uh, we don't know when the end may come. OK, but but we need to make every effort to do that which God has called us to do. So. Peter desired to refresh their memories, that is, uh, uh, the, 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 the hearers at that time, and also our memories right now, and to stir our thinking so that we might have this teaching firmly in mind. Because if you read uh, uh, verse 15 of 2 Peter chapter 1, it says, And I will make every effort so that after my departure you may be able at any time to recall these things. All right? So, so to do this, he carefully described what mature believers look like. All right? Encouraging them to grow in grace and knowledge of the Savior. <clears throat> and, and can I tell you right now that if you're not growing, you're dying. If you're not growing, you're dying. We are called to growth. We are called to spiritual maturity. We are called to grow in grace and knowledge 
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, even though this text is centered on dealing with apostasy or false teachers arising in the last days, the message from 2 Peter is still relevant because certainly we are living in the last days even more so than the believers that were addressed in this letter. So our faith must be anchored on the testimonies of scriptures. How many of you can say, my faith is anchored on the word of God? My faith is anchored on the word of God. Because if you look at the world today and you look at your situation today, it may be moving, it may be uh, 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 less secure. But if you look at the word of God, his, his word will secure you. His word will encourage you. His word will move you to spiritual obedience. It will move you. His word is, is like a mirror to us. It, it, it points all of our flaws, all of the things that are our shortcomings, but, but it also tells us how we need to handle it, how we need to grow in grace, how we need to mature in the faith. So our faith must be anchored on the testimonies of the scriptures. So in our text, mainly the first 14 verses of chapter 1, Apostle Peter, he points out that the full knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord is the foundation on which Christian character is built. Notice, Christian character is not built on the books that you read. Christian character is not built on other people. Christian character is not built on your money. It's not built on uh, your house or all the material things that you have. Christian character is built on the knowledge of God. And Jesus are saying, how then do you get knowledge? How do you get knowledge? Well, you have to read the word of God to obtain knowledge of who he is. Many people are looking for the road map to success. Can I tell you right now, this is the road map right here that God wants you to have. This is the road map that he, he intends for you to read. This, the word of God. Matter of fact, we learn and we know even that he doesn't want, he does not just want you to read it, he wants you to eat it. He wants you to consume it. Consume it. Because a lot of us are walking around, we are spiritually malnourished because we're not eating the word of God. We lack knowledge Therefore, understanding of the things of God to fight what we're going on in the world today. Can I, can I challenge you today that whatever you're fighting against today, God has the solution in the word. If you're fighting depression, God has the solution in his word. If you're fighting mediocrity or fighting uh, 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 identity issues, God has the solution in the word of God. It is the foundation of which Christian character is built. You know, it's, it, it really is a call, really, to climb the ladder of faith, isn't it? When you came to, the, to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know what? What happens is that there was a transaction that took place. Jesus came on the inside of you and he made you a new creation. That was a transaction that took place. Now, you must build on the faith that you already have. And can I tell you right now that if you're walking this life as a believer in Jesus Christ and you're not growing in his grace, then you got to ask, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? It seems to me 
that a lot of us are locked in on the big spectacular stuff that you want God to do. But you still have not done the little things that he's asked you to do. How can God show you the big and the spectacular if you still haven't done the small things? God doesn't work that way. He doesn't work that way. He wants to experience each and one of our faith in him. Even faith in the uncertainties, even the things that we don't see a solution to. God still wants you to trust him without wavering. Don't doubt him. Put your trust and faith in him. But let me tell you, you need to walk it out in your life. Well, I want you to know that God provides everything we need for spiritual life and godly living. When someone say, I'm struggling to live a godly life, and then I ask them, what have you done about it? What have you done about it? Well, I, I, I've, uh, oh, I just keep struggling. <laughs> um, I just think sometimes it's just going to go away, but it, it keeps coming back up. It keeps popping back up. Well, well, if you have not gone to the solution, which is the word of God, that's the first place to start. The first place to start is the word of God. Genesis to Revelation. Genesis to Revelation. You know, every beginning of the year, everybody make a commitment to do something, don't they? Yeah. This is that time of the year, right? People are starting to, mm, okay, I, I'm going to start that in 2024. And you, you know how we do it, right? We, we, we start planning, right? For, uh, uh, for, for, for the commitment to be better, to, to read the word of God, to pray more, uh, 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 to, to uh, maybe your financial goals you got out there, you know, a certain amount of money you want to make or uh, uh, something that you want to work to to obtain. Maybe you want to lose some weight. Hallelujah. If I come down your aisle, just raise your hand. Maybe, maybe you want to come down and, and, and Lord, a, a financial blessing. I want to get out of debt. Hallelujah. If, you're, if, if I'm coming down your aisle, raise your hand. Uh, if, maybe, maybe I want to hit it big on an investment return this year. Hallelujah. Raise your hand. You see, maybe there is something that God, you, you, you want from God. And, and can I tell you, that it, God has everything you need. But you got to start with him. You got to start with him. And, and normally the way it works is that in January you on fire. Whoo, yeah, I'm ready to go. I, I got this. I got my plan all laid out. I got it all mapped out and everything else, right? Then the middle of January take place, and then you like, okay, let me look at it again. Okay, yeah, yeah, I still got time. I got twelve. I got you know a little less than uh, twelve months, but 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 it's still there. I got a whole year practically, right? Maybe, maybe I could just cheat one more time on, on on the meals and eat a little bit more junk food, and then I'll start next week. I'll, I'll start next week, and then you know what happens? Next week becomes next month. Then the next month becomes the following month. And then I come and ask you, I say, hey, how are your goals going? How are your plans going? You'd be like, what plans? What goals? What, 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 what you talking about? Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, I just, uh, I need to get back on track. Well, can I tell you right now? You need to start. Start somewhere. Start with the scripture. 
maybe that is the starting point right there. Start with the scripture and just one scripture a day. Don't try to read a whole book a day. Don't try to read a whole chapter a day. One scripture a day. And can I tell you, when you do one scripture a day, God is going to give you the appetite for the second scripture. He's going to give you the appetite for the third scripture. You know why? Because that's the way God operates. Now you're starting to eat God's word. And, and, and my Bible says it tastes like honeycomb. It's sweet. Mm -hmm. Sweet. It's not bitter. It's sweet. We try to make it so complicated to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. We need to stop that. God did not call you to be theologians. No, 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 no. God says my message will go out to the hearers, and I will convict them of what I said. God does not want, he doesn't call you to memorize from Genesis to Revelation. Well, that's good if you, if you can memorize it that way, but, but let me tell you, if you, what is good if you memorizing the word of God and you're still not doing it? We have many people who are knowledge were puffed up. What happens with people who are full of knowledge? They start to stick their chest out a little. Hmm. I know what the word of God says. Look down and condescending on people who may not know what the word of God says. We are called to be servants of the Most High God. And servants of the Most High God is not to walk out with your chest puffed out because you got a Ph.D. theological degree from a known university. But it is to walk as a servant and to pour into people. But thus says the Lord. If you know the word of God, then, then you know what? God is going to hold you accountable for what you know. Don't, don't forget that. Don't forget it. I've been going to church for 30 plus years. Preacher, I've heard every preach. I've heard every message ever preached in the scripture. Yeah? Yeah? What are you doing about it? Where are you now? Are you still struggling with the same stuff that you were struggling with 30 years ago? At the first sermon that you heard? Where are you moving? That's what God is concerned about. He's not concerned about how long you've been in church, but he is concerned about what are you doing with his message. That's what spiritual growth is all about. Growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, is concerned about what you are doing with his message. What are you doing with it? Are you just closing your Bible after the message and then putting it on your shelf. And then when Sunday come around again, you, you open it back up when the preacher preach. Well, if you're doing that, then what are you doing for the other six days? You, 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 you're walking on empty. Can I tell you that? If you're walking on empty. You get, your, you get your spiritual gas tank full today from 2 Peter. But then when Monday comes, it's time for another fill-up. And you know what we do? We replace God's word with other stuff. Let me, let, let, let me put it to you this way. I, I struggle with my own weight. And uh, every now and then, hey, Jackie, I feel like I need to be rewarded for passing that donut shop. 
multiple times. I look at it, but I keep on going by. Say, oh, no, I don't need no donuts. I keep on. Let me let me go. Keep on going by. I'm not going to name the person who normally tugs me. I'm not going to name that person. But but every now and then I get the temptation. To move on. And you ought to be proud of me because one time I went to the donut shop and I didn't even own a, a, a order me a donut. The other person who was riding me had the donut. But 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 here's here's the point. Every now and then I feel like I deserve a reward. You know, I, I've been going by this donut shop and I hadn't had this donut. It, it's time. You know what? Let me go ahead and go get me a donut today. Because you know what? I deserve a reward. I go off into the donut. Yeah. And you know what I tell them to do? I say, I want that cinnamon one right there. That sugar cinnamon one. And also warm that up. Warm it up too because you know what? It's a whole different donut when it warms up. It's a whole different, it takes on a whole different taste when it warms up. And then once I get, once, once, I, once I eat the donut, Something happens. I start feeling a little guilty because I had all that sugar. But then also something even bigger happens. I get hungry again. Because the truth of it is, donuts have no nutritional value. I'm talking to somebody here today. What the world is giving you has no nutritional value. What the world is dishing out to you and say consume, 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 has no nutritional value. Because guess what? Once you eat it, you're going to be hungry again. You're going to want something of substance. Your, your body is not going to be satisfied with just donuts. So let's get off the donut living. And let's get to the word of God that will provide true spiritual nourishment. Let's eat the word of God every day, even if it's a scripture, one scripture a day. Let's eat it every day so that you can be filled. And your appetite will continue to grow for the word of God and not for that spiritual, I mean, not for that donut stuff that they're giving to you in the world. Stop eating donuts. Stop it. No more donuts. No more donuts for you. If you need me to say it, then I, you hearing it right now. No more donuts. But start eating the word of God. It brings life. It brings fulfillment in your life. How many of you going somewhere? You got a destiny? Raise your hand. You got a destiny. Yeah, we got we all have a purpose in this world. Take hold of it because God said it's yours. I have it for you. But you know what? You can't get it. If you keep on stopping at the donut shop. Amen. That's all I got to say. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, I have accomplished what you have called me to do for today. I pray that you were pleased. And I pray that the message was so clear that even a little child could understand. Build us up where we're torn down. Oh, Father, I pray that you will make us fit for the battle. A lot of us, Lord, are wounded soldiers because we're not fit. We're not growing in your grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, I pray that that would change today. Oh, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would give us power. I pray, Lord, that 
We would not just close the book today, but we will reopen it tomorrow. And then on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday and Saturday, and then see a celebration on Sunday when we come to you. With healed hearts, mended, broken hearts, revival, it starts with us, the people of God. Send it to us today. We ask it all in the magnificent and mighty name of Jesus and in Jesus' name in whom we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Amen.